Well, there are many different strategies from ASOs through microRNAs to sRNAs all the way far upstream to zinc finger proteins as well as CRISPR-Cas9 techniques. These last two really have not yet reached the clinic. However, all of the other therapies are now in various phases of clinical trial developments. So as you may know, the uh, largest ASO trial was the Tom and Erson study conducted by Roche. And unfortunately, the top line data is that there was not an improvement. And in fact, those individuals who were dosed more frequently and individuals who were older tended to have worsening with worsening clinically as well as a worsening in terms of biomarkers such as neural filament light and imaging abnoise such as ventricular dilatation. Individuals, however, in that patient population who were younger and dosed less frequently and with higher CAG, cap, CAG scores might show a benefit. So as you know, that strategy uh, may have resulted in excessive knockdown in the wild type hunt Huntington in, um, in uh, that study. Now, there are other uh, allele-specific ASO strategies, such as those being pursued by WAVE, and we have yet to see the clinical data on the most recent SNP3 compound that they are developing. There are, of course, RNA splicing modulators. There's both Branoplam as well as a compound being developed by PTC. Uh, we are very excited because this is a systemic orally uh, administered strategy. And we believe that this may be better because it can not only address the whole brain, not just selectively where you're, where you're uh, applying it, such as when, which occurs when you are giving it intrathecally, the ASO, uh, but it may also address systemically the entire tissue of the body. We don't really understand fully the effect of the hunting mutation on peripheral tissues, but undoubtedly this is important, for example, in some of the metabolic defects seen in Huntington's disease. Uh, we're concerned, of course, about some of the recent data with, um, as you may know, uh, neurotoxicity and peripheral neuropathy seen in the initial Branoplam treated cohort. And of course, the PTC um, study is underway in Europe, but has been delayed in terms of its progress in the United States because of delays in the FDA review of the protocol. And of course, uh, there is the intraparenchymal strategy. The Unicure studies uh, are furthest along in this respect, and they show promise. The initial cohort of dosed individuals um, uh, seem to tolerate the therapy well. However, more recently, of course, the study has been put on hold by the Data Safety Monitoring Board because of concerns about uh, cerebral edema, which has been responsive to steroids. So we'll have to see what happens, but we're hopeful that strategy will go forward and that, that trial will restart. So many ways um, are promising in terms of being able to knock down uh, mutant Huntington. Unfortunately, many of them are not allele-specific therapies. There are various degrees of invasiveness, and we think that these therapies are, show great promise and may in fact be complementary and could be used in conjunction with this strategy to knock down neuroinflammation. I think we just need to be dedicated and determined to move forward with these various trials. We have um, uh, a, a rapidly progressive serious illness. Patients are willing to undergo invasive therapies that are uh, uh, that have a high degree of scientific basis. So I think that um, uh, all of these obstacles can be overcome. And the question will be, uh, will the hunting and lowering strategies be effective? And what strategies like the Anexon therapy can we combine with or use alternatively to uh, hopefully give us more tools to slow the disease progression?